So I was missing Bruce Willis and uh, I decided to watch one of his recent movies and uh, I thought maybe maybe because he had paired up with some actors I'd heard of in this film that it might not be absolutely terrible but the, today I ended up watching a dumpster fire in Gasoline Alley. Uh, yeah, um... This movie is hot garbage. <laughs> it's fr fresh, fresh garbage for you to uh, to enjoy. Uh, it's it's not a great film, um, and I don't want to like I don't want to ha hate on uh, hate on Bruce. I know he's. He's going through a legitimate medical condition, and I hate that. Uh, th this is, these are the films that ended his career. You know, like these are the last films that he made. Um, it's sort of like I think the last film Orson Welles made was Transformers. Uh, it's sort of like a weird thing to know about somebody who was great that their career ended with something like Gasoline Alley. And yeah, it's a great, John McClane is a classic film character and will always be a classic film character. People will always look back on Die Hard. 50 years from now, people will still be watching Die Hard. Um, it's just going to be one of those films that people always go back to. So, Bruce will live on, um, despite this film. Uh, which, to be totally fair, I think he, he definitely got a payday for this. He has maybe 20 lines of dialogue in the film, if that. And you can tell, by the way, that he definitely is not doing great. He's struggling through this. I don't know if this was like the literal last film that he made before quitting, or second to last, or third to last, or whatever. But I, you can hear it in his speech. It's uh, He's struggling to get the words out. So most of his performance is actually just sort of like standing there and looking intimidating and just being Bruce Willis on screen. Um, this film is actually, the lead The lead of this film, surprisingly, is actually Devin Sawa. Uh, when I saw that in the credits, I did not know Devin Sawa. I, I was like, uh, what? <laughs> Devin Sawa is still acting? Devin Sawa, to me, like, strikes me as the kind of person who would have, like, drifted into, like, Hallmark movies by now. Like, he, just, he would just be in... I, you know, he's... I guess he's still recognizable enough to be in straight-to-video crap. Um, that's kind of news to me. His career wasn't that prolific, but... Devin Sawa is still here in 2022. I'm. I would love to explain to uh, to the uh, the teenagers of the world who Devin Sawa is, so they can be like, "Oh, okay." It's like, have you seen Final Destination? No. Well, uh, shit. <laughs> uh, what else was he in? <laughs> you know, just Wild America. <laughs> um, man good for him for maintaining a film career for this long i haven't seen him in forever uh and we've got luke wilson who was pretty much the only thing i enjoyed in this film i'm not gonna say he's good but he's enjoyable his character is so obnoxious and he plays him in the most obnoxious fashion that it was actually kind of fun it was the fun thing about this film, but this film is terrible. It's from like the the Yui Bowl school of writing and directing, or Uwe Ball, or however he wants us to pronounce his name from German. Um, it's it's one of those things that could have worked if they had just kept it like uncomplicated, you know. Like if you tell your friend, yeah. Uh, you don't have to go to that. Just just tell them that you have a doctor's appointment. And then your friend goes and is like, 
So I can't go because uh, I, I forgot to tell you, actually, I have a son and we have a doctor's appointment because like a couple days ago, he was like, he was hit by a car and we, uh, he's fine now, but we've already, yeah, we already been to the hospital. Now he's in like physical therapy. It's really great because we got to go to the physical therapy and I really like the physical therapist and, and she's really hot. We've been like flirting back and forth and it's like, dude, oh my God, I just, I just say you have a doctor's appointment what the hell rabbit hole did you just go down? What is happening? Oh my God. <laughs> you know, now you have a kid that doesn't exist and you're faking a relationship. Oh, uh, that's kind of what this film feels like is it starts off and it just keeps going in directions and directions and characters just kind of like fall into the film like they've always been there. And then there are characters in the film that like fall into the film and then they just... Like, why are you here? Like, what what purpose do you serve? Why are, why were you introduced in this film? Um, there's uh, uh, there's this girl Christine, who uh, I probably should at least say what the movie is remotely about. So, uh, Devin Sawa plays I don't know his name is one of those asinine like rhyming names like Justin Jade or something. It's really stupid, and he's the. <laughs> He's this tough, tough tattoo artist, uh, and he's at a bar, which ironically is not named Gasoline Alley, but at the beginning of the film, he's at this bar and he's talking to this girl that's, you know, a terrible actress, by the way, uh, but ironically wants to be an actress, but the actress herself is actually just atrocious, um, and she's, <laughs> I know she's in the film for all of like five minutes, but her dialogue just did not give me, I, I immediately I was like, oh my God, this is not going to go well. Um, and, uh, she plays this girl star who's a working girl. And, uh, this is kind of a, I guess a seedy bar. And, uh, then we just kind of cut forward in time. We leap forward and then, like, later on, we get to see these cops, and they're coming in, and it's Bruce Willis and Luke Wilson are these cops. And, uh, oh my god, there's four dead girls in this CD bar. And they're, like, beaten to death and staged, so to speak. The description did not really go into what staged meant, but uh, it's... You know, I mean, there are a lot of references that people make in the film to, like, it being, like, horrifying. And, like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened to these girls. So, I don't know if they got, like, stranger things, like, murdered, but I don't know what happened to these girls. It's not very descriptive in the in the AD there. Four dead girls. Uh, and uh, they find this, this dude's lighter. Uh, this J Justin Jade... Jeremy Jade or Justin something JJ. I'm gonna call him JJ because I remember it started with two J's. JJ. They find JJ's lighter, uh, and that says gasoline alley on it. And then we learn that the name of the film is actually this tattoo parlor, Gasoline Alley, that he owns and operates. And he's in there trying to give a tattoo to this girl. And the cops walk in and, and they're like, you're going to have to get your tramp stamp another day. We got to talk to this guy. <laughs> and so they uh, they break up the, the tattoo process because that's how things happen in real life. They just, you just can't go into a tattoo. Stop tattooing. We need answers right now. <laughs> and uh, they just they start questioning JJ slash Devin Sawa about why he was there and you were the last one seen there and he was like yeah i mean i talked to her but i i, I had to go meet my friend uh after that and they so he references this christine character like who is the most irrelevant piece of shit in the entire fucking movie because she shows up and then she just disappears and she's like i was like what why are you here why are you in this movie She's not his girlfriend. They don't do anything. <laughs> she doesn't contribute to the plot of his story. Other than to me. But she... If, if she only showed up in the one scene to be like his alibi. If, if she was such a minor character. But they bring her back. And I'm like, why is she in another scene? Why is she here? She's, she's not relevant to the story or the plot. They're not dating. 
It's not his sister. It's nothing. She is nothing to him. But she keeps coming into this fucking movie. You know? Um, and, uh, like, she, they don't even seem like they're friends. Like, she was annoyed that she had to, like, vouch for him. She was like, oh, I can't have cops coming into my establishment. You know? Like, all right. Uh, what, what, whatever you are. So, uh, Justin, JJ, Devin, whatever, is somehow also connected. He's, like, really into cars. Or I guess that describes Gasly now. He's got, like, a classic car. And he's also got, like, friends in the movie business. So he was actually going to try to hook this star prostitute girl up with, get her a job in the in the movie biz. He's got a, a friend who's on a TV show that has 117 million viewers. No fucking TV show has 117 million viewers. None. Nothing on TV right now has even remotely close to 100. The Super Bowl wouldn't come close to 117 million viewers right now. This dude is on a regular. He's like, I, I'm number one on the call sheet. He's like, it, and how do I know he has 117? Not only because it's mentioned, but because he fucking tattoos 117 on his body. He tattoos the viewership for his TV show onto his body. What the fuck is this movie? <laughs> so, so uh, JJ is talking to this dipshit actor who apparently uh, was in jail for three months and that's how they met. He's like, you used to cry yourself to sleep, and I, I stood up for you, and I beat up that one guy because you were scared of him. And that's like how he, that's how he owes JJ information. He's trying to get information out of this guy, you know, to see whether or not he knew this girl or knew what's, does he know anything? Is he, it's like, why do you think your friend would know anything? <sighs> and there's this weird mechanic dude who like walks over, and he's in the film for like five minutes, and they call back because he's, like something happens to JJ's car later, and he's like, "Yeah, it turns out I'm gonna need you because my car's messed up." They don't really go anywhere with that, and the film just eventually you get to this thing where there's some ring that's got some people involved who are in the porn industry, but they're also sex trafficking girls, and the cops know about it, and some of the cops are in on it and in on the take and. And there's this one obnoxious guy who has, like, the world's weirdest and worst ac accent who is, like, running the thing. And uh, it's, it's just, it keep, it continuously, it just gets weirder and worse. And then, I, I can't, I just, I literally, with this movie, I just cannot, um... <laughs> Luke Wilson is decent. I will give him that. Uh, I don't know what happened. They gave Luke Wilson... They wrote Luke Wilson as this obnoxiously cocky... Think like Ryan Reynolds level Deadpool. I, I own the world. This shit is mine. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I kick down the door. I'm here. You know, like, he's just the most confident cocky dude ever and luke wilson owns the hell out of that film like he thought this film was going to theaters um it's actually a an entertainingly solid performance from luke wilson in an otherwise terrible movie there's a a terrible tv commercial that plays in the background at, at for like five seconds that you can tell was like i don't know dubbed or faked it has uh, punching, kicking sound effects that sound like they're from, like, dubbed kung fu movies. <laughs> you know, like, I was, what is that? The music is non-existent. I'm sorry. So if somebody's credited with writing the score for this film, go fuck yourself. Uh, because this is not a score. It sounds like I paused a video game and there's just like somebody's just like holding this like music in the background. This like <laughs> and like it's just like waiting for you to like resume a video game like there's no actual score to this film there's nothing there's nothing i can't think aside from luke wilson 
I really can't think of anything good in this film. And the fact that Bruce Willis, I can't say anything bad about him because his role is actually quite minimal. Uh, they use his name to get you in, but really this is Devin Sawa's film. Luke Wilson has, has second billing, and then Bruce Willis has less screen time than actually some characters and actors you've never even heard of. So he comes back around, like he's in and out of the film, but um, they obviously like minimized his screen time. He knew he was, he knew his career was coming down to an end, so he wanted something where he could just kind of clock in, earn a quick mill, and uh, clock out, you know? So he's, he's really not in a lot of the film. Um, so yeah, if you're going in, into this just for Bruce, it's it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. It's not it's not a film. This is not a Bruce Willis film. This is a Devin Sawa film, and that makes it even worse <laughs> because when you say the words "it's a Devin Sawa movie," nobody ever goes, "Ooh, that's gonna be a good one." Can't wait to see a Devin Sawa movie. I don't know who directed this. I don't ever want to know who directed this. I think when I actually write the review for my website, I don't even think I'm gonna include it. I don't want this dude to ever be recognized with credits. He should not be in the Directors Guild of America. This film is so incompetently put together on so many levels. It's written poorly. It it doesn't it it's barely coherent. It tries way too hard to bring in all of these elements. It has characters pop up like at the end. They're they're talking about there's this like doctor and suddenly this doctor's there and he pops up and he's like, Yup, I'm actually the guy who's at the top of this whole thing. But he's it's not even like a climactic build to his reveal because he's nobody cares. Like you don't even care about the guy who's supposed to be running this entire fucking thing because that's not the character you actually care about the reveal. Like it's just it's it's such a bad film. The audio description was okay. Um, I think they did the best <laughs> that they could with what they had. I think the film was kind of shitty and they kind of just gave it some audio description. I think it's kind of hilarious that like this film has audio description, but I could probably go out and find like 20 classic films that don't have audio description. Um, I hate to be that guy that could, that's like, oh, don't, don't do audio description for this film. But there's something that's actually kind of annoying about a film this bad that clearly had such a limited audience and potential that this has audio description, but yet we still haven't gone back through and given audio description to classic films, uh, throughout, you know, time, um, that is just a little, that's a bit much, uh, you know, for example, I can't watch Chris Nolan's Tenant, but I can watch this. Why is that a thing that exists in this world? Um, yeah, so fortunately for Gasoline Alley, as I've stated already this year in several of my reviews, I also saw Marmaduke this year so for me <laughs> it's like Marmaduke put like everything in perspective because when I gave Marmaduke an F I literally now <laughs> at least for a while as long as that movie's fresh in my mind I keep asking myself this question when I go to grade a film would I rather watch this or Marmaduke again and the answer generally always seems to be the film that's not Marmaduke so, keeping in mind that I enjoy Luke Wilson's performance in this, I'm not going to give this movie an F. Shocking, I know. Because Luke Wilson was good enough to pull this film up to the grade I'm going to give it. I'm giving Gasoline Alley a D. For dumpster fire. <laughs> That's what this film should be called instead of Gasoline Alley. Uh, they took a cool name and they just killed it. Yeah. Um, you're not missing out on anything. I... Uh, there's nothing... There's really nothing more that needs to be said about this film. This film doesn't even need to be reviewed. This film just needs to be like locked away in a vault somewhere. 
you know, <laughs> so that people don't have to see it. No one will like this film. It's 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 just about people deciding what level of bad it is. Like, how bad is it to you? There isn't a person that's going to like this film. It's not a well-made film. It's clearly made by people who don't know how to make movies. So, um, I don't know what its Rotten Tomatoes is. I'm going to assume zero. Uh, I'm going to assume zero percent unless somebody was being really nice to Bruce Willis at the end and tried to find something nice to say uh, so that his film didn't finish out his career at a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But I'm just guessing this is a zero. Um... That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to check out my website, macmovieguy.com, and the audio description project, and also the adna.org. And that's it for me today. Oh boy. That was, that was a ride. Thank you, Devin Sawa.